the Tesla Cybertruck. You either love it, or you hate it, or you love to hate it. Some people might even say that it's garbage. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. Room for improvement. I agree, Elon, and I'm going to improve on this design. I'm actually going to make it into a garbage truck. This is new out of the package, and it is probably the most beat up, worst casting I've ever worked on. Oh, the lines on this vehicle were just too simple, but I really wanted to preserve the base vehicle in the final build. Well, the first thing we need to do is chop it up a bit. Now that it's broken in two, you can start to see the cab taking shape. I need to angle the front down a little bit so that the front of the body can go up. And I'll use some styrene to make a roof on the back of this cab. Using the casting itself as a template is really useful. I added a few more pieces of styrene to close this in. And I needed to cover up those gaps with some triangle shapes. These wood carving chisels have come in so handy recently. Well, we got a bit more of a workable shape here. Let's move on to the base. I'm using the base of an Erkenstein rod. It's a different Hot Wheels casting. And I think it looks pretty good here. It'll give us a nice flat chassis to work with. Just need to lose those back seats of the Tesla. Who is this vehicle made for? There's gotta be a market for it, right? Chopped off the rear doors. We're gonna do something with the rear of this vehicle as well. Not sure what yet. Another good tip for tracing something out on styrene is to use some poster tack or sticky tack to hold it down for you while you trace. And then I can carve out a shape that matches the back of the cab. This will help me continue the body lines down to the rear of the vehicle. And just to make this easy to put on and take off again, I made a little tab here and started adding some detail to the sides. And I glued on some more styrene rods. These are two millimeter square stock to help me start to bulk out of the back. I used some C-channel beveled at an angle to enclose the sides of that tab. And using a see-through end of a triangle ruler, I was able to get a pretty accurate measurement of this little corner detail that I want to put in here. And you can see it has the added effect of filling the gap and also giving us a little bit of sci-fi panel line. Cutting some more styrene strips so I can enclose the rear of the truck. I always prefer to leave things longer than I intend them to be, so I can change the design on the fly as needed. At this point in the build, I hadn't decided what I was going to do with the very rear of this vehicle yet. Now onto this gap in between the cab and the rear. A really good sci-fi bit is zip ties, but the problem I have with zip ties is that they're really recognizable. I do find if I chop off the edges, just keep that serrated middle part, it looks like a vent. So building this boxy housing for those, I made some kind of battery? I'm not really sure what this is, but it has something to do with electricity. You can see it gives us a nice little step of detail, as well as looking a bit more sci-fi than if it was just a flat panel. So next I used some cardstock to mock up a panel to go inside of this back of the car. Traced it out onto styrene. And once that was cut out, I was able to shape it to get just the right fit. And once that was fit in there, I had to sketch out some designs on a piece of paper. 
to decide what I wanted this to look like. Building up some layers of detail by sandwiching some styrene together. And recently I found some of this styrene rod that has a hexagonal cross section. And for this garbage truck, I'm going with a little bit more of a sci-fi futuristic look, more so than a modern garbage truck. So I went with a kind of roll-up door for the back. And those rear panels were looking a little bit bare, so I added a couple more details to break it up. And I did have some gaps here, and you can see I've already filled two of them. And I thought of a really neat idea to be able to fill these in, so let me share that technique with you. I start by cutting a super thin piece of styrene to about the thickness of the opening. And I shaved it down to the proper length, got it into place, and slathered on some of this extra thin styrene glue. The good part of the styrene glue is it's actually a solvent, so it starts to dissolve the plastic which you can then kind of mold into place. And by using this pointy metal tool, I could press it into place and then apply more glue as I needed to soften it. And once it was soft, it just squeezed right into place. There we go. I hit it with a little more styrene glue to smooth everything out, but that is a really effective way to close up a gap. All right, let's talk wheels. I 3D printed some wheels and I needed to offset them from the Erkenstein rod base. It was a little bit inset from the Tesla base. So I just added some styrene tubing. This is eight millimeter diameter and I super glued them in place. Of course, reinforcing with baking soda. And we had a nice fit. I thought the rear of the chassis needed a little bit more detail, so I added a bumper with a couple lights and a bar step. I'm not sure what this is, but was a nice little addition. And with the build done, it was time to prime. So while I'm painting this truck, let me tell you about why I'm making a garbage truck from a Tesla. A few months ago, I was talking to my friend Andrew over at Maple Leaf Customs, and we talked about doing a buddy build together, where we pick the same casting and start building something with the same theme and see what rendition we could come up with. We kept it all secret and I'm not actually going to see his build until we post these videos live. Anyone in the Diecast YouTube community will know who Andrew is already. And if you don't know who he is, go check him out. I'm really looking forward to see what he makes with the Tesla. I'll put a link to his video down in the description, so go check it out after you finish this one. I didn't get the whole paint job on camera this time around, but it was a basic blue-gray with some weathering. I've really enjoyed weathering with enamels over acrylics recently. I talked about that in my last video, which you can go check out too. I also recently acquired some alcohol inks and I threw some yellow on top of the white lights to give it a glowing effect. I think it came out pretty well. I'll definitely experiment more with this in the future. And I had to add some more detail, of course, with masking off some stripes. All of the weathering steps after that pretty much follow along what I usually do. Weathering powders, enamel washes, bringing it all together with some dust and rust. And this is the final truck. Let me know what you think, like, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next build.